Okay, so in the next five minutes, I'm gonna tell you the secret to finding the next world-class zinc deposit. So what you do is, you go out, you get in this position, you close your eyes and concentrate really hard, and whatever direction you feel the force, that's where you dig. <laughs> Just kidding, obviously. Um, a more technical title for this talk could be towards identifying a geochemical alteration halo around the ore deposits of the red dog zinc lead barium district in northwestern Alaska. Um, and most of the talk is going to be focused on explaining what that even means and why it's important. So Red Dog is located in northwestern Alaska. It contains one of the largest zinc mines in the world. And zinc is used to galvanize metals so that they don't rust. And it's also in things like sunscreen and cosmetics. The mine is operated by Tech Resources, which is a Canadian company, and Nana, which is a co-op with the local indigenous people and exploration for new deposits around the mine is ongoing today. So there's a few notes about the geology. The deposits are hosted in organic rich mudstones and shales, which were deposited in a deep water marine setting about 340 million years ago. And the zinc mineralization came in and replaced some of those sediments relatively soon after the deposition. So on the next slide, you're gonna see a typical organic rich mudstone. They're pretty boring. They're fine grained. You can't see any of the grains with the naked eye. And these are two examples of the ore, much prettier. The zinc is in a mineral called sphalerite, which is this light pink stuff, and the reddish and orange mineral here. Um, and this is actually the lining of a burrow that's, that, that was preserved, like a worm burrow. Another important point is it's located in the Brooks Mountain Range, which is an extension of the Rockies. Um, yeah, so you're probably wondering, what is an alteration halo? So this is just a generic um, metal deposit here in a cross section, and they're usually quite small. So for example, one of the deposits in the Red Dog um, is only 500 meters across at its maximum width. So maybe that doesn't sound small, but if you're looking for it in an area that's hundreds of kilometers wide, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. So luckily, many deposits have are surrounded by a much larger alteration halo. So this is an area where the rock's been geochemically changed related to the event that made the deposit, but it's not mineable, it just has a, a small chemical change. So if you put an exploration drill hole here, you might know that you were at least on the right track, even if you didn't hit the ore deposit. And if you put another one here, you might be able to compare the chemistry and know that that's the right direction to head. So is there an alteration halo at Red Dog? Well, it's complicated. For starters, this, um, the uh, original sed sediments have varying chemistry. After those sediments are deposited, they go undergo more chemical change. Um, that's a process called diagenesis, and it can affect, affect different parts of the rocks in different places. Then at Red Dog, because we're in this big mountain range, the rocks have actually physically been moved around along faults, which you'll see in a second. And along this fault zone, you get another layer of chemical change. So now if you've got a drill hole that goes right into the ore zone, what you see next to it might not actually be representative of the alteration halo. So what I'm looking at in this project is a drill hole from an area like this, far away from any known deposits, to try to characterize the background. So my samples collected every 10 to 15 meters in a drill core. Um, I brought those back to the U of A, I cut them to see a nice fresh surface, and I identified smaller zones to send of just one um, texture to send to a commercial lab for uh, major, minor, and trace element characterization. So because these rocks, a lot of them look very similar, and you can't see the difference in chemical variation, what I've done is compare um, some of the major elements, so for example, aluminum versus titanium, to try to classify them in different types of rocks. So aluminum, titanium, in marine rocks, both come from the erosion of land. So you'd expect to see a positive correlation, which we do, so that's great. Um, but I also noticed that there's two different trends here. And when I looked at some of these samples where the aluminum is enriched, they look like this. So it's practically falling apart. This is from right in one of those fault zones. And that makes sense because a common mineral that forms in fault zones are clays, and clays have aluminum in them. So that's kind of cool. So what am I actually going to do with statistics? I want to look at those different rock type classes and see if there's any statistically 
significant difference in the minor and the trace elements. And this doesn't tell me whether there's a halo or not, but I'm planning to look at more, like another set of samples from near an ore deposit, and I'll be able to distinguish what chemical signature is coming from the background and what's coming from the alteration halo. So I'm still figuring out what else I can do with the techniques we learn in this class. But one possibility is to apply some of the grouping techniques that you would learn in four nine, or 690 um, to see if I can do that classification process in a more uh, quantitative way. So that's it.